Hey guys, welcome back and welcome to my Iron Man Mark III project. So, if you follow my social media, you've probably seen all kinds of various parts and pieces of Iron Man uh, show up on my Instagram and Facebook posts. And I've been wanting to do the Iron Man Mark III for a long time. It's one of my favorite Iron Man suits. Uh, for those that are wondering what the Mark III is, in the original movie, uh, this is the suit, this is the first suit where you see the candy apple uh, red or hot rod red, I guess they call it. And uh, I've, I've got some clips here I can show you so it can kind of jog your memory a little bit. And it's a really sharp looking suit, just like all of them are, but uh, that was the first one. And uh, there are others I would love to do too, but you, you had to, I gotta choose one, so that's the one I chose. Um, Several questions I'm sure that are gonna be out there in the comments section, so let me head them off in advance. So the first place I went for files was DO3D for the Mark III, and this is the DO3D uh, Mark III helmet. And I have printed several of the uh, pieces, and like any other newbie, I was excited to start printing these things and, and give them a go. And I discovered really quick the importance of scaling and sizing uh, to make sure these things fit you, but we'll get to those lessons later. Um, and then not long after, I came across uh, Walsh 3D uh, had their own helmet. And uh, here it is right here. It looks amazing. A lot of great detail and uh, it has the ability to motorize and it all opens up and such. And this one can too. It just requires a little bit more work to do it. So, so that's what I went with for the helmet. It just looks so cool. I mean, doesn't it look great just sitting here? Um, the other cool thing about this is that he just, just as of like a week ago, came up with his own full set of armor. So rather than using the DO3D armor, I'm gonna use his, because as there's so much detail, it looks great. Actually, I have some images here of it right here. And uh, as you can see, they, they don't give this away, 170 bucks for everything. But uh, as I flip through there, I mean, just the, the attention to detail, is, it looks really, really amazing. And it looks like it's gonna be a very, very <laughs> challenging project. So what's new? Um, so yeah, so Walsh 3D is going to be uh, where I'm going for all the files. Now, I got a script here, so I'm going to try to stay on topic because I get so excited when I see all this stuff. Uh, so some of the inspiration for this has been other builders. Uh, frankly, Built, he has over a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. Hey, what's that like? Give me some like. Uh, by the way, nice segue, <laughs> hit the button down below and become a subscriber. Thank you. Um, yeah, so he's a huge channel. He's built these suits. He's, done, he's gone to Comic Cons and he has a lot of tutorials. So he's definitely the, the guy when it comes to the Iron Man suits and printing suggestions and stuff like that. Some others that I follow that are really good, uh, Saturday Morning Props has a bunch of videos out there about his build. Uh, again, I'm gonna have all these links down below if you're curious. Uh, Emily the Engineer is another one. As she has some amazing suits and some, done some amazing work on uh, her armor. Uh, someone else I found very interesting is Cursey Fabrication. He, uh, it's interesting because these suits can be pretty complex and he's done some very interesting things as far as the hands. He's also put like a heads up display. He even has a, you know, uh, uh, almost like a VR headset inside of his uh, uh, helmet. I'm learning to talk today. And uh, he's done some really neat things. So what's neat about a project like this is there are so many other people that have done this and you can look at what they've done and learn their lessons. And that's what I'm hoping to do here. Uh, Plentiful Props is another good YouTube channel that's done a lot of Iron Man stuff. And uh, uh, Stefan, one of my uh, new friends, uh, the all in nerd, uh, he's out there in, I believe in Sweden and he has an excellent suit and he's done a lot of uh, uh, appearances and TV and stuff like that. So a lot of great talent to draw on to learn from. Okay, so I mentioned this video is just an intro, just introducing you to the Mark III, my plan, what files I'm gonna use. And in my next video, there's a couple topics I wanna cover because I've, I've seen them uh, from other builders and some of the ways they've done their prints. And uh, well, let me just start from the top. So I think one of the first things I wanna do is in my next video, I'll give you a lab tour. Uh, I'll show you how I have my 3D printer set up. I'll show you how I have my enclosure set up, how I do my filament, uh, how I have them in dry boxes. We'll, we'll cover that in grand detail because to me, if you're going to invest this kind of time and money and filament and electricity and everything else, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're, you're set up for success from the get-go. So I'll show you how I have my lab set up. Speaking of being set up for success, uh, I'll do another video after that talking about 3D printer calibrations. I haven't seen this mentioned a lot. I know a lot of people just throw filament in there, take their best guess and they go. I, I don't do that. I, I like to print precisely. I like to make sure that my machine is properly calibrated 
because these pieces all have to fit together. They're being done over many, many different printers. So you just wanna make sure that the part from this printer and the part from that printer fit together within tolerances. So I, I think it'd be good to focus on that for a little bit. Also, I'm gonna talk about the materials I use, so uh, what I'm using and why, and uh, we'll move on from there. Uh, the next thing I think will be fun to share with you is, I'm still learning this, is how to use Armorsmith and mesh mixer. Armorsmith is the application we use to uh, load the parts, the STLs, into the program. We resize them to fit our body because in Armorsmith we we sized our body and we're using it as a digital mannequin to make sure all these parts are going to fit and, and connect just right. So I want to go through and show the things that I've learned about Armorsmith and then also a mesh mixer. Now I know there are more advanced users that can use Blender or other applications to do this but I'll just share what I know and uh, hopefully from the community comments, I'll, I'll learn more from you. Um, the other big part of building Iron Man is, as you can tell, there are not many flat surfaces. So getting these prints properly oriented in Cura or Simplify 3D or Prusa Slicer or whatever you have for me using is very, very important. Now my preferred slicer is Cura, so that's what I'm gonna stick to because I know, I know Cura very well. So we're gonna go into a little bit of details about some of the things that I've done and some of the lessons I've learned with the proper print orientations, as well as I use a lot of tree supports, and that is something in Cura that's still seeing a lot of additional development. So as more features come out, I'll share those with you as well too, because definitely you're gonna need supports to do all of these kind of prints. And um, yeah, I've learned a lot in the last year for sure. The um, other thing I do uh, wanna do is, I definitely wanna talk about print safety because these prints, I mean, just to do these helmet prints, some of these prints took, you know, well over a day, some took two days. So uh, I'm just going to go over the reasons why I do what I do. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm just going to give you some suggestions because uh, definitely as I end all my videos, I definitely want you to print safe. So I'm going to show you some of the things I do uh, to ensure print safety. I'm printing in enclosures. I have a fire suppression device in there. Uh, in the room, I'm monitoring the VOCs. I have an air purifier. I, have you know, that kind of thing. And then some of the things are even more simple, like putting the 3D printer on a battery backup UPS, because where I live, we do get those flickers every now and then, and it can be enough to take the printer offline. So you don't need a ginormous UPS. I mean, they're very expensive and you can go that way, uh, but certainly what I've put on my machines uh, is good enough to uh, help the printer uh, keep on moving along for a good 15, 20 minutes at least. So a couple simple things there. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, I use OctoPrint and I use a plugin called Obico. So uh, what I'm doing on my 3D printers is uh, OctoPrint is running the print and Obico is monitoring them so that if it detects any potential failures, it alerts me on my phone uh, or I can set it up to immediately pause the printer. Uh, and so this, and again, I don't want to get too far in the weeds here, but uh, I definitely want to introduce you to those things if you're not aware of them and tell you how I use them here in my little print lab. So that's the gist of what the upcoming videos are going to be. I hope you find this video interesting. I'm looking forward to your comments in the comment section down below. If you wanna see what I'm up to, check out my social media. I am on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course here on YouTube. So there is that. As always, I look forward to what you guys have to say. And remember, please print safe.